My name is Kenzie, and I'm offering you a Hatha yoga practice today from the beautiful Everyday Counts program space. Um, as you can see, I do have a blanket here. It's nice to have one nearby to support your knees. Um, and I'm sitting on a couple of blocks, but you could also sit on a cushion or a folded blanket or a chair, um, or you could lie down as we begin this practice. So make yourself as comfortable as possible. And remember, I'm only here to make suggestions. So have the practice you need today. Feel free to press pause, to fast forward, to do what you need to do to have the practice you need. All right, so we will get started. So continue to make yourself comfortable. And once you've found that comfortable place, perhaps close your eyes. Perhaps begin to breathe through your nose if you can. And allow yourself a few moments to simply arrive here in the present moment. Notice if you are comfortable, if you need to make some adjustments to increase your comfort. Maybe starting to pay attention to that feeling of pressure where your body touches the floor or touches that soft support beneath you. I like to start by noticing this connection to the floor because there's a quality, there's a quality of stillness and of connection, this gift of gravity. And it can be a great reminder of sort of our intention behind this practice to find some stillness, perhaps in our mind, sometimes in our body, and to connect, connect to the present moment, connect to our physical being. But also to work with this gift of gravity to find steadiness and ease. And in the midst of this stillness, we can also notice the ever-present movement of our own breath, perhaps inviting your hands to your belly if that's helpful, and choosing to soften your belly and invite that inhale to expand your abdomen. And simply letting go of the exhale, feeling your abdomen draw back in. And continuing to feel the movement of your own breath within your own body. And the inhale, soft and deep. And the exhale, softer and slower. And your mind might wander, and that's okay, that's what minds do. For a few more moments, can we choose to pay attention and feel the movement of the breath? We're inviting that inhale, soft and deep. But it doesn't have to be a complete inhale, just enough to feel the belly expand gently. It doesn't have to be the most complete exhale, but just noticing that inward movement to the abdomen. Let's simply pay attention for five or six more breaths. And listening for it, feeling for it. And letting this be enough. So 
So here we are now. If it suits you, you could bring a hand to your belly and a hand to your chest or not. And perhaps offer yourself a little sweetness here, a kind word, a prayer, an affirmation just for you. slowly releasing your hands. Let's begin our movement practice. So if you need to give your legs a shake or adjust your seat in any way, or if you're lying down, moving slowly over to one side, slowly making your way upright, um, this little bit of warm up to the upper body could be done sitting on a chair. It could be done even kneeling with hips off of heels if that's more comfortable legs extended in front of you or cross-legged. Again, whatever you need so that you can access the upper body comfortably. And we're going to mostly focus on the shoulders and arms. Please remember you can pull your arms down at any time. So we'll slowly move our arms into what's called cactus arms or in a fuller full body pose, sometimes goddess arms. And you'll notice my palms are facing towards you. My elbows are in line with my shoulders, so it's tempting to let them drop down or kind of wave up. But we're going to see if we can keep elbows in line with the shoulders and also a kind of a 90 degree angle at the elbows. So you'll notice that I'm going to peek at them now and then because they often aren't where I think they are. Um, and you'll also notice, you know, my fingers are quite active and my fingertips are pointed towards the ceiling. So also notice if your hands start to flop down that we're going to bring some energy into the wrists and hands. Ah, great. So here we are. This in itself is probably going to feel challenging. We're spreading the collarbones, almost like you're trying to reach your elbows away from each other. Ah. And now we're going to try to find this first movement. So keeping those elbows and upper arms where they are, let's slowly bring those forearms down. And then maybe even further down, just as far as is possible for you. And then slowly back up, right? And then we're even going to reach the forearms back behind us a little bit, again, without losing that elbow connection. So I'm going to turn sideways so you can see this from the side view. Yeah, I'm bringing those forearms forward, keeping those elbows in line with the shoulders. And then slowly back up, right? Remember to keep energy through those hands as we shift the forearms back. Well, you see, I don't have very far to go. And then I start to feel that through the shoulder blades. Let's do this a couple more times in either direction. And going as slow as you need to and putting your arms down at any time. We're going to awaken all of the muscles that support the shoulders through a few different movements. Again, active fingers, keeping those elbows in line with the shoulders. Let's do one more, and this could be your chance to put your arms down if you need to. Once more. Okay, so next movement. Let's bring the elbows towards each other. Again, we're keeping elbows in line with shoulders, active hands, and maybe even pressing those arms behind us a little. And you can soften your belly. Invite those soft belly breaths. A couple more. You could even close your eyes here if you wanted and kind of feel into what is maybe getting a little tired, what is stretching, what's getting warmed up. And maybe one more, or this is your chance to put your arms down. This could be the round that you take a little break. Yeah, great. So we're back to that first position. We're going to bring the forearms parallel to the mat, like so. And now imagine you gently hugging something into your armpits. We're still active through the hands. And we're still 90 degrees at those elbows squeeze something in your armpits 
and squeeze the elbows to the waist. And a couple more. I love that little floating sensation when my arms come back up. Squeeze something gently into your armpits. Flow back up. One more. Oh, let's do two more, shall we? Float. And here's the final one. And we're gonna keep the elbows at the waist or the side ribs, and we're gonna keep that 90 degree angle. And remember, strong through the wrists, strong fingers, and we'll rotate the arms out. And this might not be a big movement either. Just watching that we don't simply reach back with the fingertips like that. We're really reaching back through rotation. And I bet you're feeling some warmth and awareness in those shoulders and through the backs of the shoulders into the shoulder blades. You might even feel this one into your upper arms. And so we'll do about three more, maybe even closing your eyes. This can be as big or as small a movement as you need it to be. You can just be flirting a little bit with this muscle engagement. All right, let that go. Ooh, just circle those shoulders a little bit, wiggle them around. Yeah. All right, so let's make our way now to seated and we'll do a little bit to soften up through those hips before we get onto hands and knees. So, as is often the case, I'll invite you to rest into your hands, take your feet wide, bend your knees. Rest into those hands any way that's comfortable. It could be fists, it could be palms flat or fingertips. We'll rock both knees to one side. And then to the other. And a few more times. I'm noticing how that feels today. I'd like to add a gentle, familiar twist if you've practiced with me before. So as the knees fall to one side, we're leaning into that hand, lifting that opposite arm off the mat and circling it around behind us, letting the spine gently twist. And we'll slowly reach back, reach those fingertips away from you, bring the hand down, bring the knees to center. And as the knees fall to this side, leaning into this hand, sweeping the opposite arm. Off and around, reaching behind, finding that gentle twist. And slowly back. Let's do this once more, either direction. Kind of a bit of a full body movement here. Finding ease. Noticing what you notice. And then we'll slowly come back once more, other side. Press down through that bottom hand, reach behind you with the top hand. And we'll meet back at center. Yeah. From here we will come on to hands and knees, tabletop position. This is where a blanket might be very welcome under your knees. Getting whatever else you need to be comfortable here. Uh, so once you're in your hands and knees position, just check in with the hands here. Maybe we spread the fingers wide. Maybe we come onto the tops of fists. We could do this on forearms as well. We'll move through a little bit of cat-cow. Hopefully that's a fairly familiar movement for you, but it's okay if it's not. We're finding our neutral spine. We're gazing down at our mat between our hands. Maybe we'll take a slow breath in here. Maybe with the exhale, we can tuck that tailbone down towards the mat and slowly start to round the spine. Press the hands down into the floor, drawing chin towards chest. And then we'll turn the tailbone up and slowly begin to arch the spine, shrug the shoulder blades together, gaze forward or up. We'll do a few more here. Again, it could be the exhale as you slowly round. 
stretch and squeeze. It could be the inhale as you slowly arch and stretch. A few more in either direction, maybe closing your eyes. Noticing what you feel. Leading with the tailbone, allowing each vertebra to follow. Moving as little or as much as you need to to find some ease, even in the effort, even in those sensations of stretch and engagement. And let's slowly make our way back to that neutral spine, that neutral position. From here, we'll begin to rock the hips from either uh, to either side, starting to find that little bit of outer hip stretch. Remember, you're pushing the floor away with those strong hands. And then we'll start to rock the hips over to one side and back towards the heels, rock the hips to the other side. Shift the hips forward as you push the ground away. And keep circling. There's a lovely break from that pressure on the hands when the hips circle back. But then we re-engage and push the floor away as the hips circle forward. Let's circle one more time in this direction. And then as those hips circle back towards the heels, we'll change the direction of the circle. You could perhaps even close your eyes and notice how it feels to move in this way. And to soften the belly, invite the breath. To find some ease here, even in the effort. Even in those sensations of stretch. A couple more circles. And the next time the hips are moving towards the heels, let's press into a child pose. So you might be widening the knees, dropping those hips back towards the heels, perhaps walking your arms long in front of you, and then resting your forehead. And if the forehead doesn't rest comfortably, bend the elbows, cross the forearms, rest there, or stack fists. And we can close our eyes. And soften the belly. We'll find that soft, deep inhale. And soft or slower exhale. And let's do three or four more, simply paying attention to the movement of the breath. As you complete those breaths, let's walk our hands back under us and make our way back to that tabletop position. So I'd like to do one more movement from tabletop and I'll switch the view um, once each so that it is easier to see what I'm up to. But I'm gonna start by facing you. And again, support under those knees is great. Yeah. Well, let's bring maybe the right leg out to the side. And as we can, um, we can adjust here as need be. So more support for that bent knee. Um, you'll also notice this uh, inner edge of the foot could be, could be on the mat, outer edge could be lifted. There could be a little bend in the knee. Right now it's right out from the hip, but it could be a little further back. Eventually we might move towards a straighter leg. We might root the sole of the foot. And you'll notice this bent knee, the hip is right above the knee. So I haven't shifted to one side or the other. Yeah, I'm going to invite my, the back of my neck nice and long. I'm gazing down at my hand. From here, I'm shifting forward and back a little bit. 
And imagining um, that my sitting bones are tail lights and as I shift back, I'm reaching them to the back of the room. And then from here, as I shift back, check out that straight leg foot, I'm lifting onto the heel and turning the toe up. And then as I shift forward, I'm lifting onto the ball of the foot, lifting the heel up. And I'm going back and forth a few times here. So finding that little rotation from the hip and still working on that weight bearing on the hands. I'm gonna turn to a side view so you can get that as well. Just keep going with it. sitting bones like tail lights reaching back I know that gives you a bit of a hamstring stretch we'll do a few more and this could be quite a big stretch for your inner thigh I know and the more we could elevate that bent knee that's on the mat sort of the less of a stretch one might feel there so we're going to bring that foot back, that first position. Now we're pressing down into that left hand, and you could be on a fist here. We're going to sweep the right arm out, the same arm as the leg that's out to the side. We're going to reach it up, press down, reach up. Check out that foot. I'm going to lift the toes. Quite the little stretch here. See if my head is in line with my spine. Maybe gaze up at the hand. And then I'll slowly bring the hand down, the foot down. And now I'm going to try switching sides. So as I press down through that right hand, I'm going to sweep the left arm out and up. There's, there'll be less rotation here because those hips are now facing down rather than shifting. And then we'll come back down. Let's do this a couple more times in either direction. Sweeping that right arm up, coming onto the heel, turning the toes up. Nice open chest, open hips here. And then slowly back down. We'll try the other side. Once more in either direction. Moving with ease, slowing it down. And we'll meet back at center. Let's guide and glide that knee in. We'll press back into a child pose for a few breaths. And soft belly in breath. Softer, slow out breath. And paying attention to the movement of the breath. Couple more. When you feel ready, let's return and we'll do it all again on the other side. So that opposite leg comes out to the side and I'm just checking that that bent knee hip is still over the knee. I can adjust where this leg is in space, but maybe eventually bringing it out to the side, rooting the sole of the foot as much as possible. Again, imagine you those sitting bones at the, at the base of your hips there are like tail lights. And as we shift the weight back, we're kind of pressing them to the back wall and we're pulling ourselves forward. And then we could add that rotation through the hip as we shift back, come onto the heel, turn the toes up, quite a stretch here. As we pull forward, let's lift the heel and we're onto the toes. I'm thinking about the back of the neck long, gazing down at your mat throughout. Really pushing the ground away with those strong hands, knowing you could be on the tops of fists here. Soft belly breaths, finding some ease. And we'll do once more in either direction. And 
And we'll meet back at center. So remember, we're going to add that little bit of twist. So you know, shake out the hands if you need to. Come onto the tops of fists if need be. I'm floating that same arm out as the leg. So if it's the left leg, it's the left arm. Reaching it out. Reaching it up to the ceiling. Press down to lift up. And then notice my foot. I'm going to come onto the heel. Turn the toes up. And let's slowly bring the sole down. Bring the hand down. And now we're switching hands. And that opposite arm sweeps out to the side and sweeps up. You can follow with your gaze. Less movement here, a little resistance, but look for that rotation to the ribs. And then slowly back down. We'll do this a couple more times in either direction. Press down to reach up, turn those toes up. Moving with ease, even in the place of effort. Sweeping that opposite arm up, looking for rotation through the ribcage. And down once more, either direction. And finding your breath here, and maybe even closing your eyes. Notice how it feels. Let's sweep that leg in and maybe widen the knees as we press back into our child pose. Soft belly breath in. And softer, slower breath out. Couple more. And when you're ready, walk your hands back under your shoulders. Make your way up. Okay, so we are going to come to kneeling with our hips off our heels. Yeah, and if you'd like, you could tuck your toes under. If you can see this, just tucking my toes under. It gives the feet a chance to stretch. It does feel a little bit unpleasant, um, um, but it's, it's not as unpleasant as sitting down on your heels. So there's just a little chance to give those toes an opportunity. And at any point, you can untuck your toes. That's just a, just a little side bonus there, a little foot bonus. I'd like to come back to our cactus arms. Uh, and we'll play a little bit with movements of the spine while maintaining these active arms. So I talked a little bit before about spreading the collarbones and feeling like you're kind of reaching your elbows away from each other, right? Creating space. And also really active hands. So we're not letting the hands be floppy. We're kind of reaching out through those fingertips. Yeah. Now at the same time, you know, we might be hinging back a little bit here. Let's see if we can keep those hips over the knees. Sometimes it helps to squeeze your bum a little bit. And think about stretching a little bit through the front of the thighs. Yeah. So keeping that arm position, let's notice if we can do a little bit of twisting. We've already done some twisting today, and so this is just a slightly different variation. So I'm gonna think about keeping the chest open, only going so far as I can maintain this arm position as I slowly twist to the right. Yeah, you feel strong belly action here. And slowly back and to the left. And back. Yeah. Let's try this once more in either direction. side and back let's float the arms down yeah the arms are probably quite fatigued that warm-up we did was was quite a lot for all of those muscles and now we're adding this activation here to rotate we're gonna take that same arm position into some side bending yeah okay so again Spread the collarbones by reaching those elbows apart. Strong hands here. 
side bending. We'll squeeze to the bum there to keep you, help you stay upright. Other side, check on those toes that are tucked under. Slowly back. And once more, either direction. And finding that ease, even in that place of effort. And release. Yeah, shake it out a little bit. So we'll do one more variation where we'll twist once in either direction and then we'll side bend once in either direction. And that creates a little bit of foreshadowing for what we'll do in our standing goddess pose. Yeah, so again, we'll find our cactus arms or our goddess arms and we twist towards, maybe this is the left, slowly back, other direction. Reach the elbows away from you, even as you come back, maintain that spread through the chest. We'll side bend. And we're back. If your toes are still tucked, untuck the toes, give them a little, little tap here, a little shake. So it is time to come to standing. So feel free to use the support of the wall. If there's a chair nearby, take your time. We will slowly make our way to our upright standing position. And if there's a blanket, maybe moving it off the mat so that we don't trip over it. Yeah. Uh, so once we're standing, let's check in. I do some familiar foot movements here most of the time when I get upright. So, lifting and spreading the toes, lowering them down. Maybe softening the knees here nice and buoyant as we lift and spread the toes. Lower them down. A couple more times, activating those arches by lifting and spreading the toes. And lower. You'll notice the weight shifting. We're starting to kind of tune into the feet. Yeah. So, releasing that, you can walk the feet and let that go. Um, and let's rock onto the outer edges of the feet and then rock onto the inner edges. So as I rock onto the outer edges, the inner edges lift. As I rock onto the inner edges, the outer edges lift. You can do this with your hand on a chair. You could be leaning against a wall. We're letting all of that awareness start to trickle down into the feet. And this can be quite active here. You might feel a lot of sensations here from the feet, but we're creating options for movement, right? Not all surfaces are perfectly even, and we want to feel like we've got you know, some stability here, even as we shift the weight from edge to edge. All right, let's release that and walk it. The next one we'll do, and again, reach for the wall, reach for a chair. I'm lifting one heel and circling around the ball of the foot. This is where the cricks and the cracks come in. Perhaps that's okay. We'll change the direction of the circle. And then if you'd like, you can actually bring the top of the foot to the mat, kind of on the top of the toes. Tuck that foot behind and now I'm rocking from baby toe to big toe. And this can be a pretty juicy stretch for the top of the foot. Yeah, maybe find that sweet spot. We'll take a breath here. and then release it. And you can take a moment here to notice how different those feet feel now that we've done some circling and some stretching with one foot. They might feel different. So let's do the other side again. We're gonna lift the heel of that foot. We're gonna circle around the ball of the foot. Change the direction. And this can feel like a bit of a one leg balance. This is where it can be helpful to have some support. I'm gonna come on to the tops of the toes. So tuck that foot behind, rock from baby toe to big toe. Maybe find a pretty juicy stretch through the top of the foot. And then letting that go. Here we are. 
And final piece here, um, we can walk our hands down our knees, bend our knees slightly, and we're gonna start to circle the knees a little bit. So this can be a little hello, hello moment for your calves. Starting to stretch them. Notice if one heel wants to leave the mat. I know my right heel always wants to lift. That calf is tight. And we're letting the weight shift around the edges of the feet, letting those ankles receive this. We'll change the direction of the circle. And that soft belly breath. Wonderful. All right, so we'll come back to upright. Yeah. We're gonna play a little bit with our goddess pose, which I mentioned before. So I'm just slowly walking my feet wider apart. That's a wider than hip distance. Um, probably not as wide as one of your legs is long. I'm going to turn the feet to outwards slightly and we'll have to adjust once we're in the pose because every body is different. So I'm bending my knees here. Yeah, I, and my knees tend to go in a little bit so I have to be quite active to press my knees away from each other, pressing down through the outer edges of my feet, seeing if I can stay fairly upright here. Yeah, so we'll play a little bit with moving in and out of this pose and you can choose how deep you want to go. You can also choose the angle of the feet and the knees. So as you move up and down, you can keep sort of playing with what's possible here. And noticing maybe the knees are pointed in the same direction as the toes. And we can bring the feet a lot closer. Yeah. Okay, and we've done this one in our practice before. We're gonna move into our bent legs we're gonna add our cactus arms. There they are, or our goddess arms. And then we'll straighten the arms, straighten the legs. It'll be a nice cross here in front of the chest. And we'll come back. And again, you can choose how low you wanna go here. And keeping those outer edges of the feet rooted, keeping the chest broad. Our goddess. And we'll do three more. And as we use the whole body for this movement, you might feel the extra warmth, the deeper breath, the stronger breath. And then we'll come into this pose. And find it. Now we're going to come back to that twist. So twisting in one direction. And slowly back. And twisting in the opposite direction. And back. And slowly release. We'll take an extra breath here. You can always bring hands to the belly. back. And let's try our side bending. Rooting those outer edges, opening those thighs, open chest. And release a couple breaths here, hands to the belly. Try it again. This time we're going to add both side bending and twisting, or twisting and side bending. So we'll find our goddess pose, get rooted, push the ground away, feel that openness to the thighs, openness to the chest. There's our twist in one direction. Keep reaching those elbows away from each other. Slowly back, push the ground away. We're twisting to the other side. Slowly back. I know we're pushing it a little bit here. Now let's side bend. And back. Side bend. And back. And release. Hands to the belly. So 
we have opportunity to do that once more. If you feel like you've had enough, this might be a lovely chance to focus on the breath. Uh, to do whatever you need to do. I'm going to invite you into this one more round. So we'll find our goddess pose. So push the ground away, open through the thighs, reach through those elbows. Come twisting to the right. Swing it back to the left. Bend. And back. Final side bend. And back. Slowly release. And this is where we will come into a wide leg forward fold. So you can take your feet parallel now. If you need to come closer, please feel free. I'm walking my hands down my thighs with a little bend to my knees. Now this could be the pose. And you could bring forearms to thighs and still have head in line with your heart, which might feel good if you have high or low blood pressure. If you want to, you could reach for the floor and let your head hang. We're keeping a little bend in our knees here. That gives our hamstrings some slack. So it kind of feels like you're pouring out of your pelvis. So whatever you choose here is fine. You could even have your hands on the back of a chair here for more support. Yeah. If your head is hanging, maybe nod your head yes, turn your head no. If your forearms are on your elbows, or sorry, your elbows are on your thighs, um, you could now and then lift your sitting bones up, straightening the legs, bending the legs. So you choose how much inversion you have here. You'll be here for three or four more breaths, whatever you need to do with this pose. Soft and deep in breath. Soft or slower out breath. And then when you feel ready, we are going to bring forearms back to thighs, bending those knees, hands back to thighs, push the ground away as you slowly roll up. And taking a moment here to let everything settle, we can start to heel toe, heel toe back to our mountain pose. And we'll invite a few breaths in mountain pose, noticing how we feel. Again, you could be leaning against a wall or have your hand on a chair. Maybe even closing your eyes if balance permits, if it helps, hands to belly. And soft belly breath in, maybe feeling a little taller. And soft belly breath out, shoulders soften. more. Inhale, find your fullest height. Exhaling, soft shoulder. From here, we will be making our way onto our back. Um, have everything you need for final relaxation. We're going to move a little bit more before that final fold. So again, take your time making your way down to the floor and yeah, lie down on your back. We will return to that hip movement where we take the feet wide, the knees bent, and rock those knees from side to side. Yeah, noticing how that feels. Great. 
From here, we could choose to hug the knees in towards the belly, lifting those feet, rocking from side to side. I'm going to be circling both knees together, starting to massage around the lower back and sacrum. And changing the direction. And then meeting back at center. Now let's orient those knees right above the hips, so the thighs are upright. We're gonna press the low back down into the mat gently. You'll probably feel your abdominals engage here, so this is a great place to be. If you want, you could bring your fingertips to your knees. We're gonna make little circles on the ceiling with our knees. We're always coming back to that first place with the knees above the hips. A little bit of a core stability exercise. You can keep pressing the low back down into the mat as we move those knees in a gentle circle. And the circle could be getting a little bigger, but again, we're always coming back to that first middle place with the knees above the hips. And keeping the low back gently pressed into the mat. Again, we could change direction, letting that circle get a bit bigger or not. And then the knees come back. So we're going to try one more little bit of core engagement here before we move into a final twist. So I'm bringing my knees over my hips. Now I'm bringing a 90 degree angle to my knees. I'm bringing the arms out into cactus arms, but as you can tell, my forearms are vertical. So the elbows are out in line with the shoulders. Forearms are vertical. I'm going to gently press the arms into the mat. I'm going to squeeze my thighs or knees together and slowly rock onto the right hip. So you'll bring the knees over and then up slightly. And then slowly back to center, feel the press of the low back into the mat. Now we'll rock to the other side, draw the knees in a bit, squeeze those thighs together and back. This could be the tiniest movement in one direction. I feel like I'm drawing a little smile with my knees. We're tugging those knees up at the end of the movement. And also pressing actively down through those upper arms. So we're not letting them shift off the mat, only going in so far as we can keep the upper arms connected. And we'll do this a couple more times in either direction. Please take a break, hug your knees into your belly at any time. And simply making suggestions here. These are opportunities. Possibilities, options for movement. All right, the next time the knees are at center, we're gonna guide the knees all the way over to one side. Yeah, so we could adjust here. We could bring that bottom hip closer to the midline. Could let those thighs separate. If you've got a blanket or a pillow, they could come between the thighs. Remember those cactus arms before? We're gonna let those forearms rest on the mat now. Yeah. So you can make any other adjustments you need to here. You could have something under the bottom knee. That could be your hand or between the thighs. You could bring the knees a little closer to the belly or further away. So feel free to experiment here. You could even bring the hands behind the head, sort of like that beach pose. Sometimes you find a little stretch here through the chest or armpits, or even straightening that bottom leg. Okay, so. Playing with what you need here for about five more breaths. Maybe even closing your eyes. Feel that soft belly and breath, slightly restricted with the twist. Soft and deep in breath. 
softer, slower out breath. Now when you feel ready, slowly guide those knees back to center. You can always hug the knees to the belly, rock a bit from side to side. come back to those cactus arms, maybe that first leg position, and then we can rock those hips over, those knees over to one side. So again, all of those same options, bringing the forearms to the mat, we're in sort of those cactus arms again now, but in a relaxed way. Or there could be a little scooch of the bottom hip towards the midline. You could bring those knees further from the belly or closer, we could straighten the bottom leg. We could add support between the thighs or under. So I just know that your comfort matters here, that we can find a sweet spot in our twist that feels easy, where we can then begin to soften the belly with the inhale. And soften the belly with the exhale. And maybe even closing your eyes. Few more breaths, just like that, soft and deep. Soft and slow. When you feel ready, slowly come back to center. It is time for final relaxation, but notice if there's anything else you need. If you need another hug to the, the knees, to the belly, a little bit of rocking, maybe feet wide, rocking the knees like windshield wipers. Maybe there's another pose or stretch or movement you've been waiting for. Please feel free to press pause and continue to move any way you need to. If you are ready for final relaxation, Make yourself as comfortable as possible. You might want a pillow under the knees or under your head. Uh, you might want a blanket over your body. Continuing to make any adjustments for your comfort. You might allow the legs to move away from each other and the feet to slightly roll out. You might allow those arms to move away from the side body, turning the palms up or in or rest your hands on your belly or your chest or wherever it feels comfortable. And then you can close your eyes. Breathe through your nose if you can. Allow yourself a few moments to simply arrive here in the present moment. Once more, feeling the support of the floor beneath you. And tuning in to that quality of stillness and connection. Now from this place, beginning to tune in the gentle rise and fall of your abdomen. With each in-breath, that soft expansion. With each out-breath, that soft downward, inward movement. Noticing without controlling, this is a, a gentle invitation as we 
Soften the belly, we invite the in-breath, soft and deep. We simply let the out-breath roll out, soft and slow. We can pay attention. Let this be enough. Feel the in-breath. Soft and deep. Feel the out-breath. Softer and slower. your mind will wander and that's okay. Come back to the soft, deep in-breath. Come back to the softer, slower out-breath. Imagine that each in-breath is inviting you to fill your whole body with awareness. Feel your whole body reaching out to your fingertips, your toe tips, the crown of your head. Each out-breath is inviting your whole body to soften and settle onto the floor beneath you. The in-breath, filling your whole body with a gentle awareness. The out-breath, filling your whole body with an opportunity to soften and settle onto the floor. Stay with it. The invitation of the breath to expand your awareness and to deepen your surrender for a few minutes more. Your mind may wander, that's okay. Come back 
for five or six more breaths. Expanding awareness and deepening surrender. as you complete those breaths. Notice if you feel ready to move, and if you don't, please feel free to rest in stillness for as long as you choose. If you are feeling ready, maybe there's a little wiggle to your fingers or toes, a yawn, a little stretch. And you could Bend your knees and roll over to one side, perhaps your right side, and into a supported position here. And pushing the floor away with that front hand, you could slowly make your way upright and back to your comfortable seat. If it suits you, rest a hand to your belly and a hand to your chest, perhaps closing your eyes. Offer yourself that same sweetness that we offered at the start of the practice, that kind word, that prayer, that affirmation, just for you. Slowly releasing your hand, perhaps opening your eyes. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you have any questions or concerns, always feel free to reach out to us at the Everyday Counts program. And hopefully I'll see you again soon.